Okay, so uh, this one we're going to talk about angle of twist. So, uh, so uh, just like in axial, we started off with uh, kinematic description. both sides, the view on the right hand side, and we do substitute for the strain in terms of the parameter we know a little better than the internal forces geometry. So we know that the strain is the stress divided by the force, like the law. And we know that the stress is the force that it is. So we integrate both sides. So that gives you the elongation in general to integral, and then we also talk about situations like P, A, P are constant down the right, which is pretty typical. So we do the same thing with torsion. Think about what's analogous. The strains, the measures of the deformation in axial is the displacement in torsion to angle of twist. We have this little low factor as well. Alright, so let's we're trying to find the angle of twist. Discs twist relative to how much this front disc rotates relative to the back disc as it moves down the belt. Okay, so dp is going to equal gamma over rho dx. Similar to the gamma. Both sides. Now, in this case, gamma, the shear strain, is going to equal the shear stress over G, so even here. And the shear stress, remember, is T rho J. J is that uh, second polar uh, area mode. Right? So this now becomes. Analogous, we have the area corresponds to J, Young's modulus corresponds to modulus of the of shear modulus, the internal reaction force is P for axial, and then that corresponds to the internal reaction torque, T for the torsion, and we have this additional road. So take that, put that in here. Now I have the integral of P equal to putting in this. Here's the you can see the, the rows, the radial distance is in the cloud. And this gives me T on J D DX. So this is the integral D of X 
general equation that tells you how much a disk at some distance x from one end rotates. You have to perform this integral. Just like we have to perform the integral to get figure out the displacement along the axial direction of the axial case. But very often we have again a situation where you turn reaction toward the area factor, the geometric factor J and then G all constant. That's the case, they can all come out of the integral, and then we're just left with B at L, that's the total angle of twist, T, L, J, G. So that's the angle of twist, and you know, again, if you memorize this equation, you can see it's the same equation. Instead of P, we have the torque, L is still the length, J is the geometric factor for torsion, and then since we're dealing with shears, we have G, the, sh the modulus of rigidity, as opposed to Young's modulus. Okay? So this will tell me if I have a section here that undergoes a constant cross-sectional area, and have the same material, so G is constant, J is constant, uh, and if we put torques at the end, that means the internal reaction torque is constant all along the section, no change. That means we can figure out the angle of twist my front hand moves relative to my back hand. And that is TL on G. Okay. That's it. For you. I think in general for a lot of this stuff, and you see the same with Ben If you keep straight the analogies with axial, it's actually